Welcome back to the Profit Builder Unscripted. Today, we're talking a little bit uh, on a different topic. Today, we're talking about how do our thoughts influence our behavior and how does that influence us being able to have the life that we desire? All right, let's jump in. Have you ever noticed there's a little voice inside of our head that seems to want to tell us often how we're not doing things right, or we're not doing things as good as somebody else, or we're not perfect, or we could have done better, or like that we're always looking for and seeking out how it is that we are not enough. And I've been thinking about this for a long while. And interestingly enough, as this thought has been sort of percolating through my head, I've been thinking about, you know, what is it that is the is behind all of that and you know and i've spent a lot of time in my life on a, my own personal transformation journey i've done lots of courses and trainings and you know i listen to to coaches and and inspirational people about like how do you change your thinking change your life right like probably a lot of us have heard that expression and you know the thing that i've come to realize is that it is a process it's a journey and i i don't think that we're ever like finished with it. But I think that the more we can bring intentionality to paying attention to the thoughts that we have that run us day in and day out can really have a dramatic impact in terms of the quality of our lives and the quality of our relationships that we have with other people. And um, so, you know, I realized for myself that it's kind of this process of, uh, am I doing things that are bringing awareness to my thoughts, awareness to my behavior, awareness to my engagements with others in a way that has me just be conscious and thoughtful of what am I doing? Is this creating the experience that I want? Is, is, what, I'm, is what I'm saying or thinking, forwarding, getting me to where I want to go? Or is it just stopping me? Is it creating a negative dialogue that isn't really serving me? And uh, a, a couple of months ago, I re-picked up the book, The Four Agreements by Miguel Ruz. Now, I'd read the book many years ago, and I, I, I don't know what, what prompted me to pick it up again. I'd just been thinking about it. And, and as I read it, uh, I realized that you know, his, his four agreements, well, I, and I will tell you that I don't, I don't love the way the book's written. Um, I, I think that he uses some kind of like weird words to describe the challenges that we have as human beings in terms of um, finding our true selves. But I, but his message um, has been really great for me to be mindful about what is the internal dialogue I have. So let me tell you the four agreements. The first agreement is be impeccable with your word. The second agreement is don't take anything personally. The third agreement is don't make assumptions. And the fourth agreement is do your best. That's what you can do. And the first agreement, be impeccable with your word. I have walked around for many years thinking, hey, be impeccable with your word is do what you say you're going to do. Keep your agreements, um, follow through when you say you're going to do something, do what you say, you know, and, and have integrity in your word. And while it does mean that, the thing that kind of blew my mind when I reread the book this time was that it really, when he talks about being impeccable with your word is it starts with how we are with ourselves, our own internal dialogue and the words that we use towards ourselves that are either empowering or disempowering. And the more that we're critical of ourselves, we tend to be more critical of other people. And that a lot of times, you know, even as he starts to talk about don't take things personally, he makes the point that, you know, when somebody says something to us, if it's not on our radar to already be critical of ourselves about something, we won't hear it as critical if we're not already being critical of ourselves. And the third agreement about don't make assumptions, really like all three of those sort of tie into each other about how often do we assume that we understand what somebody means or what they, you know, or what their intent is 
or we assuming that we know because we're just focused on what we think or our point of view or our perspective. And, you know, one of the other things that he talks about is that there's so many times when we make assumptions about how we interpret what somebody means instead of asking questions. And so, you know, those first three things have really, you know, as I've read the book and I've actually gone through it twice and kind of underlined some stuff because it's not things that you and I don't know. You know, a lot of those are things that we know intellectually, but what it's made me do is really stop and notice when I'm in a, you know, I'm in a conversation and I start to take something personally to go, oh, that's just, that's really, maybe that's just my stuff about myself. Why do I have that self? Why am I being, you know, as critical of myself or self-deprecating? Why am I um, judging myself in that way and sort of turning it around instead of assuming that I know what their intent is, realizing that if I take it personally, maybe it's my own internal dialogue that is getting in my way um, or my own self-critic that is really the point and really the issue, which comes back to this thought that I've been having for a while now about how often does our own internal self-critic cause problems in our relationships with other people or how does it you know, how does it create issues in terms of getting in the way of us being able to accomplish what we want in our lives and in our businesses and, and even in a, you know, a sales conversation or in a conversation with an employee, like, are we, are we really being mindful of appreciating what we're bringing to the conversation? Or are we second guessing, guessing ourselves a lot? Are we, um, hesitating? Or are we being critical of ourselves before we walk into a conversation? So it, it, um, that whole thing, I just, I mean, I wanted to share it. If you haven't read the book, uh, like I said, I don't love the way that it's written in some ways. It's not a very long book, but I love the message. And the message itself is the thing that's had me be really mindful of What's my internal dialogue? What's my self-talk? And am I taking things personally when I really don't need to take them personally? Like that's that other person's stuff sometimes, right? Or am I um, really making assumptions about what I understand somebody to say? And maybe I just need to stop and ask more questions. And I love that last one because I think that happens a lot of times in our relationships with other people, our employees, our spouses, our kids, our friends. Like, do we really know our clients? Do we really understand what they mean? Or are we making assumptions that we understand what they mean? And maybe what's helpful is if we stop and we ask more questions. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you today because I thought it was really, it's like I said, it's really been influencing how I'm thinking and how I'm kind of moving through the world and, and really noticing more about my engagements with other people, but also noticing my internal, a lot, my internal dialogue and, um, and making me stop and pause and, maybe take a different approach and a different tact or just taking a breath and going, okay, well, is that really true? And I think that's a really useful question is asking ourselves, is it really true or maybe not? And I think it makes us pause and really ponder for a moment before we jump in and assume. So I'm going to share a, a quote that I thought about too, that I love by Margaret Thatcher. And um, it's, a, it's a great quote that I've, I've kept on my wall for years. And it, and it says, watch your thoughts for they become your words and watch your words for they become your actions. Watch your actions for they become your habits and watch your habits for they become your character and watch your character for they become, for it becomes your destiny. Again, that's by Margaret Thatcher. And basically her point is what we think we become. So I hope this is maybe giving you pause for thought today. And I look forward to seeing you next time on the Profit Builder Unscripted. Mm -hmm.